So here we are inside the museum. One of the first things you see is um, a Merlin engine, Rolls-Royce engine built by Packard under license. But um, this is probably one of the more interesting cars. This is the car that started the collection, uh, 1924 model 143. And this is it as found. And apparently uh, Graham who started this collection uh, bought this car on a farm, but was meant to be buying sheep, so he just filled it with sheep and bought car and sheep back home. And uh, I guess when you look at the inside space, you can see you get quite a few sheep in there, especially if you fold the occasional seat down and put the side screens on, and then they can't jump out. So obviously it's since been restored, but not too restored. Look at this dashboard. Oh. I've set in the gimbal again. Just beautiful. Yeah, you can see why cars that have these engines fitted, 27 litres, tend to be quite enormous. The engine is quite enormous. But a wonderful collection of cars. Yeah, this, this one, the, um, the stunt, I'm not exactly starting off, but it's a geared starter, and it was just nearly seven metres. This moment, Gosh. Quite a big engine to turn yeah, over. Yeah, seven litre V12, yeah. But um, did, did Tom explain what these are for? The they're primer? decompressions? Or? No, they're, that's yeah, priming. The primer cups for, for cold starts. So, mm -hmm. so in, in the days when... Um, Petrol was, you know, 70 octane, yeah. a lot lower than it is now. And, and also, up until the late 20s, the fuel didn't have lead in it. Mm. And so um, the lead helps to seal the, the rings. And um, so, so they opened those up, it's open like that, and squirted a bit of paraffin oil down there, on each one of them. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the lamp oil or paraffin oil um, helps to seal the rings and raise the compression enough to start it in cold days. Wow. Yeah, and that's the oil can for going around all, all these little places. You can squirt a bit of oil in. Mm. There's quite a few of them around the place. Different times. Yeah, so that's that. Right. Yeah, so this is Fenton Graham's uh, son who now looks after this remarkable collection of vehicles. He's pumping up the fuel pressure inside the cab. And these were known as double six engines, and it kind of is just two six-cylinder engines on a single crankshaft. Apparently it takes quite a bit of priming. <laughs> yeah, this is Right, we've got up to about 15 psi. That should be enough. Yeah. Is there a gauge to show you, or yes, do you just feel? There's a pressure gauge there. It oh, goes wow. right up to about 40 odd or something, but 15 plenty. So we retard it a bit. We have a bit of throttle. We'll make sure it's in neutral, so we don't run anyone over. Uh, turn it on. Some choke. <laughs> Wow. How quiet is that? Most of what you can hear is the fan. You just see the little jack shaft spinning down there. Which I think is going to a dynamo. Beautiful. This is a 1919 Packard 335 Twin 6. Smooth, Beautifully smooth. Oh, that is marvellous. Thank you very much. Goes the klaxon.
going to do another start of it. It isn't just Packards here. There are other cars. There is this um, very early 1906 Humber, which is quite beautiful, restored here, and uh, a Model T Ford. And you might have thought that a right-hand drive Model T would have been um, built in um, Manchester, but no, nope, Canada. Canada, built in Canada. Yeah. Yep, so fuel tank under the seat on these. And uh, if you look at the carburetor, I mean, you can't really believe it's a carburetor. It's that little assembly down there. <laughs> it just doesn't look like anything at all, really, but that is your carburetor. Yeah. So the fuel tank is under the seat and it gravity feeds down to the little carburetor. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll see if it will. This is the choke, by the way. Oh yes, I remember that. I had a friend who had one. It's a bit of bent wire, but that's yeah. what the, the factory gave you. Um, if you're not, this model was a cheaper model with no electric start. They mm -hmm. were available if you paid more money. Yeah. Extra. So the choke is inside the uh, where the driver sits. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have an electric starter, they gave you a bit of bent wire to operate the choke. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Not quite as smooth being just a, oh, there she goes, being a four-cylinder engine. But uh, it, it, it's a big old um, motor in these. A 2.9 litre four-cylinder side valve engine. The controls are um, confusing to someone who's never driven yeah, a Model T before. coils here and sometimes they don't work on that one. Ah, yeah, we, we can see the other side of the coils here, uh, leading to the spark plug wires. There you go, made in Canada. Klaxon no, works. So there we go, battery, on magneto power. Yeah, I think the battery's um, low and voltage. There she goes, beautiful. So not only have you got the difficulty with the um, hand controls, there are free pedals, but the free pedals do nothing like what you expect. So the right hand pedal is your foot brake. Uh, that puts you into the second gear, I think. Yep. Second out, first gear in. Yeah, in conjunction with the handbrake stroke gear lever. And the middle pedal makes you go backwards. That's so um, yeah, very, very different driving experience. But that sounds lovely. And they go really well. I have driven one of these at 40 miles an hour and it, that was easy peasy. So this is a later Packard design. Um, still with a straight eight side valve engine. So it's lost all the fuel, all the fuel's gone back to the tank. So it's got to pull the fuel through before it can start. There we go, she's got her fuel. There's still no water pump, it's thermosiphon, by the look of it. Lovely muted exhaust note, and you'll see um, this collection houses lots of things. We've got um, traction engines, none of which run. We've got a restored dubs from Glasgow. Worked 
over most of the country. But yeah, Packards are very much the first love here. All oh, right, okay. But it's a simple job. It likes a little bit of heat. Stuff. That the famous that's stuff. Called yep. Start your bastard. That's not me. That's written on the. Canvas. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that, that has now reached the UK to, it, to cause much amusement. It, it, it will be me speaking, but anyway. That'll be good. That's going to make a mess of your toes. That's right, because there's no safety systems on this whatsoever. That's in Blimey. gear. Yeah. That's in gear backwards. There's, Blimey. Um, there's a picture here, even that you know it's totally unworked. Uh, work safety um, uh, uh, not very savoury but but anyway the driver has got his feet on the blade because there is nowhere to put your feet someone has welded on some foot pegs mm -hmm. on it but they weren't on there originally oh, so you just, just rest your feet, your feet on, on the bucket blade. and they came with a bucket or a blade Alan's got a bucket and it's supposed to be it says here maximum safe angle Fifth, was it 50, 50 degrees? 50 degrees, blimey, that's, yeah, well, that's steep. That's steep, yeah, yeah, that's steep, all right. I wouldn't like to be on it at 50 degrees. No. Anyway, we'll um, see if it'll go. It always goes. It's just um, a matter of, you see, that's why I don't need to bother with Jenny Craig because of this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I'm, I'm, it's got a decompressor which I'll put on and. Um, so something just after, yeah, just any time. There we go. Yeah, single cylinder engine. I've got a plate, it's by the early days, it's not by the bottom. The less leg room you get. Line. Quite responsive. Oh, oh, he's revving it up. Brilliant. Yeah. That must be a heavy flywheel in there somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So for the um, early motorbike fans, Peugeot V-Twin from um, yeah. 1904, race bike. Race bike means you get a throttle, yep. but, yeah, no, but the no throttle. brakes. Throttle, no brakes, no clutch, yeah. direct drive. Yeah. 
So it's a direct drive from the belt yeah. around the back wheel. That's a yeah. remarkable thing. So it's a racing bike. Yeah. Just have to say, I love this crane. It's convertible. You can see it's got a soft top. So you may remember this from the Hubnut Social, um, the um, aerial square four, where you've kind of got two two cylinder engines in front of each other, uh, driving um, to, well, each crankshaft counter rotates. And is it gears between there's, the two? two? Yeah, two gears, two crankshafts geared together and then chain drive to the rear wheel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so the gears are this side, I think. Yep. So, yeah, so this is the model with um, the four exhausts, two, two pipes on each side mm -hmm. because the first models had trouble with the rear cylinders getting too hot and they had to only had one exhaust on each side and so the fuel, uh, the um, exhaust um, gases, the hot, hot gases had mm -hmm. to get from all the way from there forward to the front pipe before they got any cooling. Yeah. So they, they made them for 29 years which is wow. interesting because it... Um, the rear cylinders on the early ones did give overheating trouble, but they kept making them and mm. kept improving them, and this is one of the last ones. But it yeah, right, sounds so good and it goes what really year well. Is this one from? It's a 1955. So this one is from um, Christchurch, where it was a police bike. Oh, wow, okay. Right, a bit of choke. And see what happens. It always takes a few kicks, but it's, um, I think it's got some pressure. I never put any in it, but it's, um, yeah, no, it's still got a bit left. Not much, but you might Okay, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Only sounds purposeful. So that's one of um, many bikes in this collection. There's um, all sorts here. There's um, a scooter, which uh, New, New Zealand designed and built. And this is the prototype, the glass fiber cowling on it. Uh, we should see another one of those later in this trip. That sounds brilliant. Isn't it a nice sound? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And of course there are other things in the collection. Um, machine guns, steam trains, uh, bicycles and tricycles. Uh, the old record players. Uh, Velocet bikes, I think these were also ex-police. So um, he liked his Packards, but his day job was earthworks, which is why there are quite so many old earth moving machines about. But it's just not sold over the years, he's just kept. And you know, he can't actually drive them. For, most of them don't work anymore, but they're still here. Still a piece of history. And if we switch into this building, some very interesting cars. There's another Trekker. So that's the second Trekker of our trip. The um, New Zealand built car on Skoda Octavia running gear but we've got um, a Land Rover Series 1 used by the Queen there's one of those at the British Motor Museum as well there's a Jewett which I've never heard of so that's a new one on me but this hall contains a lot of um, British classics so we've got an MG Magnet a Ford Prefect FX4 Taxi um, Lots of Morris 8s over this side. And uh, an Ajax 6. Nash built. So, yeah, a Falcon Knight, which uses a sleeve valve engine, something Daimler did for many years. And the sleeve valve engines tend to be quite oily. We're going to see if we can get the Jeep running. 
a Jeep which never saw service. <laughs> so what was it, 4,000 miles on the clock or something? It was fairly low. Yeah. Down. The old flathead four in these. The funny thing is that, that the Jeeps were only designed to last a few short years mm -hmm. for military service and they lasted forever and, and the Trek is a, they're supposed to be um, quite a last to, lastable vehicle. Yeah, it was, was lucky to get a few short years out of those mm. ones. <laughs> yeah, all a bit of a shame. <laughs> but yes, we will hopefully encounter another Trekker on this trip. Right, let's see if this one can go. Yeah, the Yanks must have been smaller people in those days. Cause yeah, they, the they always seemed to drive them with knees splayed, didn't they? Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, listen to that. That's the sort of starting you want if you're um, in military service. And of course we've got four wheel drive, we've got um, leaf springs, a lot of fan noise, a very distinctive fan noise. Uh, yeah, that one's in exceptional condition because it's effectively unused. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice sound in the middle there. Yeah. Behind that we've got a rear engine Skoda. Not a car I was necessarily expecting to see here. Morris Minor again, but over here, Austin A30 or A35 pickup. I've seen one, sorry, two of these in the UK, but they are certainly not a common sight. One on the show circuit and one at the British Motor Museum. And next to that, we have another of these Humbers that is actually a Hillman. So to us, that's a Hillman Minx but um, I think these were assembled here and badged with a more premium Humber name. So it's a Humber 80. Then we've got the Austin Atlantic, Triumph Mayflower, a car I'd definitely like to do a video on. Hillman Hunter, which seems to be the same color as my dad's was when I was a child, I think. <laughs> Good to see, fantastic low look um, Hudson, Austin Shearline, Armstrong Sidley, Rover P4, Daimler Conquest, Rover Metro unexpectedly, uh, alongside uh, its Rover Brethren, the um, SD1. And we've got a Humber Super Snipe there, but perhaps the most interesting car for me in this haul is this Singer Hunter. Uh, very, very rare. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw one in the UK. They are just not a car you see anywhere. They suffered horrendously from rot. And amazingly, they've actually got two here. There is another one in another building. Completely the horse head mascot, for it is a hunter. Yeah, similar sort of door set up to a Rover P4 with suicide doors on the back. A uh, very rare car. Got a Daimler double six, um, which just goes to prove even in uh, New Zealand, where rot isn't so much of an issue, uh, these um, <laughs> these XJs still manage to rust quite badly. It's <laughs> even worse around the other side. Yeah. But yeah, all of the engine. And, you uh, don't want to work on it. No, I wouldn't like to change the spark plugs, which are um, so they're down there somewhere. The spark plugs are there down there. Yeah. I have done the plugs in them. Oh, not a fun job. Yeah, it's about a half day goal. Yeah. Behind that, we've got a Triumph um, 2500, I think. Yeah, yep. TC. Uh, TC. They were locally assembled, I think, in New Zealand. Yep. Um, but perhaps uh, one of the more interesting cars. We have our first sighting of an Austin Kimberley. Uh, it's effectively a land crab with a boot. Uh, very strange design, very much designed for the um, Australian market. We, sh in Adelaide. Yeah, we should be finding one, hopefully, uh, in Australia to do a test drive video on once we make it there. <laughs> that and would be good. Yeah, I cannot wait. The Kimberley and the Tasman. Yeah, so these were the first cars, I think, to use the E6 um, straight six engine. Yeah, overhead cam. Yeah, so they tested the engine here um, before unleashing it on the British public. So, very, very British Leyland, do the testing on your customers. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly yep. right, I like that. <laughs> so, this might well be my favourite building here. It is enormous and it is just packed full of, you know, earth moving machinery. Look at the size of that Alice Chalmers there. It's huge. Uh, we but could go for a drive. Oh, we could go for a drive in this Dodge. That could be exciting. I like the, num I like the number plate because, of course, here you can have anything on the number plate as long as it's six characters and no one else has had it. <laughs> uh, six cylinder engine. Let's see if we can fire it up. That's a good exhaust note. Well, oh, we'll go for a drive then. Yeah, that's a lot of arm twirling. But it is a six wheel drive model. Yeah. It wasn't on the Go anywhere, vehicle. No, I do, but I'm yeah. Yeah, we can get out too. Yeah, because it does the vacuum. Ah, oh, look at that. Yeah. Hey, this one works. But as you notice, when you rev it up. <laughs> yeah, so if you're going up a hill, yeah, let's slow down. Oh, it stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Beautiful. Oh, and they both work. I wonder if they both work at once, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. just about. <laughs> Actually, they're quite good. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. A carrier truck here. There's a big Bedford. Yeah, carrier or comma. Over there. Uh, is that a Lanchester? Or another Lanchester. day, yeah, it is yeah. Lanchester. That's the four oh, cylinder yeah. version of the Daimler Conquest. Yeah, didn't sell many of those. Uh, no, well, the, the Daimler bought, um, bought the Lanchester company in the depression when they mm. got in trouble. Uh, a nice little car that, that's for you, Alan. Little Jarrett Bradford, yeah, uh, Diamond T back there. But there's a Ford Prefect Ute you probably want to see. We'll just walk past this instrument of torture tractor you definitely wouldn't want to get in the way of that one yeah ford pilot ute that is a very smart looking bit of kit so more military trucks uh, chevrolet big bedford We've got quite a few of those in the uk yeah an international next to it yep um, yet more yeah, tractors yeah. and um, earth moving equipment Big GMC, apparently there were loads of these left here um, by the US military and flogged off to farmers and anyone else who wanted a big heavy truck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they were crane trucks, they were fertilizer spreaders, they were tow trucks, mm -hmm. they were logging trucks, they were everything. Another old Albion, but was apparently used by a traveling theatre group. Yep, so it was a showman's truck. Yeah, quite extraordinary, traveling around, around in that. Doing displays yeah but perhaps the oddest vehicle here is this old fiat um, yeah, a tractor unit tractor. yeah um, x shell new zealand doing the run from auckland to gisborne and back wow good number of wipers 
Daimler Ferret. Yep. Very peculiar things to drive. Uh, more internationals. Uh, Leyland folks will be mightily excited here as we have <laughs> an Austin Land Crab Ute and a Leyland P76. So that's the first sight of a Leyland P76 other than the glimpse of a rear end we, when we saw one in a bush earlier in this trip. Uh, Michelotti styling, 4.4 litre V8. Well they did put the six cylinder in as well. That's, that's V8, V8. Yeah. Yes, they put there we the go. sixes in, the 2.6 litre six cylinder. They were made in Adelaide, the same place as the, the, uh, the um, uh, one we just looked at, what's that now? Tasman and Kimberley. Mm -hmm. Made for three years. It was bad timing, it was right when the petrol fuel prices was on. And yeah. That didn't help them. But yeah, I love these things. Yeah, I'm looking forward to finding one. I think I've found one to drive in Australia, so I'll we'll be doing a video on one. There's a few driving ones in New Zealand. Mm. I've got another one at home that, that drives, but it's at the moment it's... Yes, it wasn't a bad car, but British Leyland was in such dire straits by the time it came out, but they kind of called a halt to their Leyland operation altogether. Mm. So, sad times. And if we go down here, another Singer Hunter. So there you go, that, that, all the survivors seem to be in New Zealand. And this was a, a service car which um, was used as a bus. Um, for the Newman's brothers. Yeah, and a V8 engine, so the fuel economy can't have been superb. Some international buses at the back. They were Newman's. Yeah. From the South Island branch. Nash Rambler. This one is a Studebaker. Studebaker. Yeah. It's um, a Lark actually. I made a cruiser and a Lark. Ah. A lark. See, I'm not very good on my American cars. Far better on my British ones. And look, it's an E type. Yeah. A Vauxhall E type. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lovely. What an amazing collection. So, again, last of the line Packard with the fins on fins look. This one still needs just a little TLC. Look, we've got another one of these that's, um, that's a better one. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've seen the better one, but... Yeah, that, but this, funnily enough, has got quite a good body underneath yeah. the floor pan. And I, th I think the paint might be better on this one as well. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely matte know, effect yeah, on exactly, that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a vacuum cleaner coat of paint on the other one. Yeah. But anyway, it's a fiberglass bonnet and the fiberglass wings on it. Ah. Um, a lovely, you know, attachment of the double five-inch headlights that, that is obviously clipped on the side here, you know. Yeah, curious, and curious things. Some people don't notice, other people say it's just terrible, you know, that they should do such a thing. Mm. But anyway, Dick Teague was the, was the Packard designer at the time, mm -hmm. and he was asked to give a new model without spending any money. And that's how it went. Well, there you go, that's how you do it, yeah. So it was Cost about twenty bucks to to um, <laughs> clap that on there. Yeah, yeah. job yeah. done. Facelift complete. Yeah. Uh, so another <laughs> Jowett Bradford there. If you haven't got any money and you've got to bring out a new model, I guess it's not too bad. No, yeah. you, you live within your means. That's and a lovely Series Two Land Rover for forward control. These are quite different to that 101 I drove. They've kind of got a bit of a chassis on top of a chassis. Um, it's the same, I think, um, bulkhead as a normal Land Rover. It just happens to be one, the same colour. So it's just higher up, engine between the seats. Remarkable things. But yeah, gosh, the stuff they've got here is just incredible. And this video has ended up being far too long because it's just such a magical place. Wonderful. And in this final building, we get to the end of the line for Packard. With this remarkable 58 and um, this very curious looking um, uh, two-door, the Hawk, clearly linked to the um, Studebaker Hawk, which looks um, rather less dramatic by comparison, because by the end Studebaker and Packard had merged and uh, it's just some of the remarkable cars they built.
some of the V8 line from the earlier 1950s. It looks quite brutal. It's got a look of a chaika about it, the Russian built um, car. And apparently the family used to tour around South Island in this, the family that owns the museum. But yes, definitely the era of the tail fin. And I love how this one seems to have fins upon fins. It's like someone said, nah, that's not fin enough. Add a bit more. And uh, apparently this one was used by the Eisenhower um, government. And it's still in original condition. What a monster. So yeah, a remarkable collection indeed. Well, sadly, I don't think that one is going to drag a bucket ever again. Um, but uh, what a fascinating place. Thanks to all of you who um, recommended coming to the um, Packard and Pioneer Museum. Um, I really wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. Um, it's not just Packard. Packard's were the inspiration. That's where it all began. But that has turned out to be um, yeah, a fascinating day out. So um, thank you to all those who recommended it. Um, all that remains for me to say is to say thank you very much for watching. There will be more videos coming in this series, naturally, um, as I work my way around New Zealand. Uh, so I'll just say, yeah, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Uh, that'd be appreciated if you could. And uh, lots and lots of noisy timber lorries. There or thereabouts. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. The Simpsons. 350,000 kilometers. Well done, BX.